are you suppressing the truth with your immoral actions? Romans chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 18. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made. So that people are without excuse. Hallelujah. Wow. Verse 21. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. We got two more verses of this part. Therefore, God gave them over in their sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. It's clear. <laughs> it's very clear. When people are preaching the truth, when they're spreading the gospel, spreading God's truth, the ultimate truth that you cannot find in the world, people start to disrupt. The street preachers, there are people going in there, unplugging their speakers or whatever, or like walking in the middle of the video. Or if they're if they don't even do that, they just they notice it. Turn their head because they know the conviction falls heavy upon the flesh because of the deeds, the sins that you're committing. At some point, aren't you tired of not knowing what is actually real and what is fake? Instead of thinking what's real versus actually knowing what is real. Because your flesh will deceive you every single time. Let me not get too deep into talking because I still have some more scriptures to read. These scriptures, let me just say this before I read this. I make... I, these scriptures are put on my heart because it makes you look at yourself truly and be honest with yourself. You know, a lot of street preachers, they do preach. Their job is, what they're doing is great, it's wonderful, but I feel like God put on my heart to really, really get into the deeps and depths of the flesh in correlation to the spirit and why you're doing the way things that you're doing and why you're acting the way that you're acting and why you're responding to positivity and the truth the way that you're responding unknowingly Romans chapter 6 verse 11 we go start here in the same way count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires 
this right here, people know that they're <laughs> obeying the evil desires of their flesh, their sin nature. That's why when the truth is being taught, they always like, oh, well, God said nobody be perfect. They're always making an excuse. But what I've learned, there isn't an excuse when you know the law. Because the law just makes you aware of sin. And if you follow the law and you're aware of sin, you can actually be a perfect person. I'm not saying you can't be without sin. Because us on this earth, after Eve bit the fruit, sin came into the earth, came into humans. So we're born with sin. But you can be dang near a perfect human being. The only man that was without sin was Jesus Christ. Let me continue. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And offer every part of yourselves to him as an instrument of righteousness. Verse 14. For sin shall no longer be your master. That's most of the people living in this world. I'm trying to show you yourself. You're like, oh, like, partying, drinking, ah, oh, you're, you're, you're. Sin is your master. Some people don't even smile unless they're committing sins. I've seen it before. I've been that person before. I wasn't smiling unless I was drinking. I wasn't smiling unless I was smoking. I didn't have the fire and the joy in my eye unless I was drinking or smoking or trying to get some sex or get my, my penis wet. I'm sorry. I, I got to be... I got to be thorough with this, with this word because it's, it's too real. It's too real and people want to fake too much. I was faking. I thought I was being real, but I was being half real. I was being lukewarm. But this is the fire. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we, this is a question. This is a question in the Bible. They're questioning, they're giving so many different questions to what city should do to this. You see this all the time. <laughs> like they're questioning uh, street preachers, this and that. That's why it's important to really know the word. Because when you really know the word, you can just open it up and give them the answer. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? They're saying, should we sin because we are not under the, the scripture, but with grace? By no means. Do you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which is the fleshly nature, sin, your desires, everything that you're chasing in the world to try to Fulfill your desires and your, your feelings of the flesh, which leads to death or be, or which leads to death or to obedience, which leads to right. Oh, I, I said that whole wrong. Hold on, let me go back so you can really understand. Do you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. That's the full scripture. The other stuff I was adding, that was just giving you more clarity on what's going on. On what you're actually obedient to. Verse 17. I'm on Romans chapter 6, verse 17. But thanks be to God that through you, that though you used to be slaves to sin, 
You have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Verse 19, I am using an example from everyday life because your human limitations, just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to every increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at the time from the things you are now ashamed of? This is when you know the law. What benefit do you, re do you reap from that? Nowadays, people are proudly being slaves to their sin. They're proudly being it. I'm going to keep on reading because... Oh my goodness. I'm going to keep on reading because it's going to tell... This, I, I, <laughs> the scripture, the word speaks, speaks for itself. Like I'm just, I'm just, a, I'm just a messenger, really. But this speaks for itself. What benefit did you reap at the time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. Excuse me. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The scripture speaks for itself. The truth is in this scripture. For the people that's watching this video, you go keep searching forever out there for the ultimate truth of your life and what you should be doing and what feels right for you and what feels pure, what feels the most at ease for your spirit and what you should be doing in life. In this world, you will never find it if you do not find God. You'll find some things that are temporary. <laughs> Satan will bless you with some things that are temporary, some Delusions of the world that are feel like it's your truth or this and that, but they are temporary. What's in this word, what God has for you, is eternal. Eternal peace. It's never going to forsaken you because it's what God has for you. It's what he has ordained for you. Here we go. We about to get deeper. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. The law is spiritual, but people are unspiritual because they're a slave to their sin. This is the most clarifying spiritual thing. If you want to clear up your spirit of all the gunk, the scum, the, the mold that this world pits within your spirit. Because that's what it does. It dims your light. I see people all the time as I, I don't be doing much, but if I'm just going to the grocery store, I see the look in their eyes. I see the shame in their eyes. Not that I'm looking for it. It's just because my eyes are, are just somehow like with them. They see me coming around the corner. We lock eyes, and, and I see the dim spirits, the flame about to go out because the sins of this world is diminishing their soul. And you can see somebody's soul through their eyes. You can see the shame on somebody's eyes. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not. But what I hate, I do. 
And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. There are things that you're doing that you don't want to do. But it's the sin that lives within you. The chasing of the pleasures of this world. Man, what a what a what a fees at, man. Like they, they over here, let me need to go over here just chasing, running, running, chasing. Being a slave to sin. Feeling that's that that's your only enjoyment. That's your only happy, your only peace of mind is if you chasing this. When God's peace is free. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know what good itself does not dwell in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is in, that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. <laughs> For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This is I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I who do it. But it is sin living in me that does it. It gets deeper than this. It gets a whole lot deeper than this. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in good law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind, making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am the slave to God's law. But in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. I could end this right here. I could end this right here. But I'm really, really trying to get you to understand that because I didn't understand the things I, 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 I was doing that I was trying to control on my own power. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. No matter how much weights I lifted to try to control my thinking, my control what I think, control what I do. I had things moving me that I had no understanding about until I started reading this scripture. And it opened my eyes fully. And everything is just so clear. This is going to be the last portion. I hope 
this is resonating through your ears. Get this in your ears. Get this in your mind. Humble yourself. Let your guard down. What are you keeping your guard up for? Romans chapter 8. Therefore, there is now no con condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. My goodness, his own son. His own son. And so he could condemn sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. The righteous requirement of the law may be met fully in us because he sent his son to die for our sins. You know what that means? Let me read this again. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, which was his son, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. I had a conversation with my grandfather. I told him, I know we can't all be perfect because God, no, because Jesus was the only man created perfectly. And he disagreed. My, fa my grandfather, I didn't understand it when I was a kid. But now that I'm a man, he is the most wise man I have ever met in my life. He was right. And when I came and read the scripture, it confirmed it. You actually can be perfect. Through this word. You actually can be perfect through this word. Yeah, we all have flaws, but the more you study this word over and over, you read this whole book, you can actually become perfect in your ways. My grandfather told me that he read the book, he read this Bible, the Holy Bible, so many times. He didn't even give me a number. He said he read the whole thing so many times. He said each time he reads it, he reads a scripture that he already read. He learns something new. <laughs> My goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is this divine wisdom and truth and understanding can't be accessed in the world. He says, My, my grandfather is. Sixty seven? Old scriptures that he read, he read them again. He learned something new. Or a different scripture, he learned something new. As human beings, when you read this book, this holy Bible, you don't stop learning. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according, in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. My old life, my old mind governed by the flesh I was living a life of death. I didn't have actual peace. P 
peace was always attached to something. It was attached to how much money I was getting. It was attached to me smoking. It was attached to me living some type of worldly experience that other people are trying to pursue because somebody else is doing it, trying to live somebody else's life. It was attached to me getting an orgasm through a woman or ejaculating. Man, Father God. But now that my mind is governed by the Spirit, I have never in my life I'm only 25. No, I'm 26. <laughs> but I feel younger and I feel the best I ever felt in my life. I thought the weights and just talking with God made me feel the best I ever felt. But I am for certain that this truth right here, this, this truth right here, I feel the best I ever felt in my life. I'm at such peace no matter what's going on because I know the Lord is in control and I know I put my sights on him. I put my focus on him. He will show me the way through this thick darkness, this thick darkness, thick, thick darkness. He will show me the way. Read it again. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Chapter 8, verse 7. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. Some people may be watching this video, they may have known me. Just because I'm saying these things, they may get hostile and they may have something against me. But it's not even about that, bro. It's about the salvation of your soul. It's about your inner well-being that I'm trying to get to. This isn't to... Granted, a person who studies the Bible, they have knowledge of the word and of the law, so you can technically judge people. But I'm not here to judge anybody necessarily. I'm just here to show people the truth, the ultimate truth, that the life that you're living isn't the fulfilling life that you think it that you may think it to be this this not your best life <laughs> i'm living my best life everybody living their best no if it's not in the scripture you are not living your best life no matter what you think you can have all the riches but lose your soul and lose yourself your best life is through god through this scripture the mind governed by the flesh is hot is hostile to god it does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. <clears throat> Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. And the rest of this, it says, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. Even though you're subject, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of the righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, 
who has raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. It starts with the spirit first. I thought I was receiving more life from just lifting weights. There's value in lifting weights. I'm not going to bring up that scripture now, but there is value in lifting weights. But there's more value in the spirit because this this body will will perish. These weights all the things of this world will perish. But if Christ is within you, in your spirit, your spirit lasts forever when this world is going to be nothing. When it gets destroyed. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you tired of your joy, your peace, being relying on? On something of the flesh, something that is harmful you to harmful to your spirit, harmful to your body at the end of the day? Aren't you tired of that? When are you gonna be tired? Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till it's too late. If you want the truth, open up that Bible. And I know we in the last days, some people would just want to want to hear their ears tickled. Not going to hear the real like this, but <laughs> even with when in the midst of all that, yo, the Bible can easily characterize anybody that is suppressing the truth with their immoral actions, whether they're insulting the truth of God and insulting Christ, or they're just Choosing not to hear it. It's so abundantly clear. When I was in sin, low eyes, no fire in my eyes, no fire within my soul. But the more I read this Bible, the more I read this Bible, my eyes began to slowly open more and more. There's times I read this Bible, not times, every time I read this Bible, I get up, my eyes are just automatically open, widened, seeing everything. You gotta stop letting the ways of this world play upon your flesh don't live through the flesh you gotta live through the spirit and the only way you can do that is by leaving the ways of the world man it may be hard for y'all just to get up and do something else because the flesh the human we are we do what we're accustomed to but yo that thing you're trying to maintain, that flesh, that, that sinful nature that you're a servant to, that you're a servant to, that's your master, that you're trying to just constantly chase every weekend or constantly, yo, it is not worth it, bruh. Be real with yourself. It is not worth it. It is not benefiting you. Understand that people due to social media and how the world is now, everything is just fast, 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 fast. Everything is just dopamine, 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 like, like crackheads, dopamine, dopamine, like seriously. Scroll on social media, oh, like scrolling, ha, ha, like straight mood of emotions up and down, this and that. Everybody has a, most people have. A short attention span man so if you made it through this video 
I'm just a messenger. Pick up the Bible and read it. That is it for this truth teaching today. The Book of Romans. If you want the truth, go read the Book of Romans. Y'all be blessed. <laughs>